Mrs. Chairman and uh, uh, Professor Schoenfeld, which uh, uh, recruited this uh, short communication to this very interesting meeting. Thank you very much indeed. I would like to present ourselves. We are from University of Modern and Medical School, and we uh, uh, have different affiliation in the northern part of Italy. Uh, this is because uh, we were able to recruit uh, a cluster of uh, girls that were uh, severely affected by um, HPV vaccination and uh, developed, developed uh, very, very severe complication. Our focus was on guardrails and cervix uh, because they are quite different uh, in, uh, in composition and also in uh, concentration of aluminium. And uh, uh, from this point of view, there is some institutional studies that compare the, the rate of adverse drug reaction between quadrivalent uh, HPV vaccinated, vaccinated people and uh, placebo. Uh, this study stated that 0.2% uh, uh, were the complication of both the groups, but uh, the time relationship uh, between vaccination and development of immune-mediated disease raised the issues of the possible etiological or causative role of such an immunization procedure, which may occur in patients with genetic predisposition. So uh, we uh, present now our cases that uh, were able to meet through the second opinion medical network, which I created in my university a few years ago, just to face difficult problems uh, from the epidemiological point of view. And uh, we have, uh, as you see in this table, 18 patients uh, uh, aged between 12 and 24 with the average BMI range and date range. They, most of them were sports uh, activity, actively practicing. And uh, they had uh, been regularly vaccinated uh, for uh, um, poliomyelitis, poliomyelitis and MR was signed. They had the common uh, exanthemas of the, of the pediatric a, a time, and they underwent in nine cases to Gardasil and the nine cases Cervarix uh, between the years 2.8 and 2.15. Uh, so they are two different groups, but in the same range of age and the same time of vaccination. Uh, as to the doses, one dose is uh, only for four patients, two doses to eight patients, and three doses to six patients before dropping out or symptoms developing. As you see in this slide, the local symptoms uh, were in some cases pain, uncontrollable and voluntary movement of the limb in one case and swelling in two cases. So the local injection reacted immediately after a few hours. As to the general symptoms, we included in this group of cases uh, only the five days post-vaccination symptoms. And you can see the most frequent are low-grade fever, headache, recurrent syncope, leg muscle pain, asthenia, and uh, several others, composite disorders. Uh, so uh, in this table, we have summarized uh, also the uh, follow-up of the symptoms in the years. You see, we have, after four years, a series of symptoms persisting namely headache, asthenia, myalgia, vascular skin abnormalities, concentration and memory problems, and disorder of sleep. These are the more frequent which we found. So uh, most of the patients showed an acute phase characterized by a variable combination of clinical manifestation with low-grade fever, skin rashes, muscle pain, headache, and sensorial disturbances. It's also to cure at the variable time after HPV immunization, ranging from hours to five days. Eventually, this acute phase subsided in some weeks, but the girls developed some chronic or recurrent symptoms resembling chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, or other functional somatic syndromes. The clinical picture displayed by each patient were actually polymorphous, except for asthenia, concentration and memory problems, sensorial impairment, temperature perception especially, and recurrent or persisting muscle pain, paresis, and dead age. Uh, as to the uh, etiologic uh, uh, explanation, we referred to, obviously, to Professor Sean Vedasia theory, because these girls met the criteria, major and minor, for uh, being closed in this, in this series of pat pathogenic, pathogenic uh, situation. 
As you can see in the slide, uh, we, we have uh, major criteria and also minor in terms of the immune disorders, and we have especially anti-EBV um, antibodies, CGM or EGG or v VCA. And uh, this uh, d immunological disorder will be faced in next meeting uh, in this very important Congress, but uh, we have to sign that uh, also uh, in some cases, anti-cardiolipin reaction were met. As you see, the titles are almost uh, EGG and uh, EBNA EGG, but uh, also VCA IgM in one cases have been described. So coming back to uh, the general uh, worldwide situation, we uh, observed that Martin Levin published uh, recently uh, some uh, cases of uh, the post-vaccination severe fibromyalgia, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and complex regional pain syndrome. And uh, <coughs> he referred the hypothesis uh, in a questionnaire proposed to 45 patients developing chronic disturbances within three months after HPV vaccination. We didn't enclose people after three months because we thought that several other incidental factors might combine, but uh, um, with the theory of Martin Levin, of course, the immunological process can last uh, long t longer time and it's reasonable also to enclose and to extend the number of the cases, probably. Uh, we uh, kept in, in touch with uh, also other uh, European uh, private institution or, or pool of families that were uh, describing these cases, not institutional, but just uh, uh, spontaneous uh, arising in the in the epidemiological situation. From France, uh, they reported 35 young girls. From Spain, 42. From UK, 265. From Denmark, 32. From Ireland, 3, uh, 314. So uh, I think that the European Parents Association uh, has been relevant to report these cases instead that uh, government institutions. Uh, as to the conclusion of my short presentation, I can say that probably uh, aluminum concentration, which is the main, obviously, risk factor, which triggers uh, uh, microglia activation and uh, hippocampus reaction, immune cross reaction, but also probably polysorbate AT can contribute to uh, pass through the, the blood brain barrier and, uh, and to favor and to increase the uh, permeation of antigens and immunological reaction into the brain. Uh, our commitment should be uh, dedicated in the future uh, to possible genetic tests to screen and to prevent this girl being vaccinated. And we just suggested some of the genetic tests which might be available to investigate in this area, but also Melisa uh, react metal lymphocyte reactivity is a blastization of lymphocyte to reactivity, and the blood GSH levels and transferring saturation might be useful. Another commitment which we have right now is to find a possible uh, screening test, uh, possible dermatological and prick test or, uh, or, or uh, uh, direct uh, contact with aluminum, PPD, DNCB for delayed immunity reactions. These are old clinical tests uh, at the time of, uh, of PPD. And also, Marie modified with uh, some metals, including aluminum. But most of all, uh, our commitment is to proper medical treatment, which is usually required, because we observed that uh, neurologic, common neurological therapies are quite ineffective or uh, also symptom worsening. I uh, thank you very much for this uh, possibility that we, we had to exchange our opinion. And we think that pulling together our experience, we probably can do a strong advancement in the describing the syndrome and uh, keeping out all this complication from the scenario of vaccination. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.